Hello, I'm Lucinda Joseph. In the studios with me is Mr. Wong Chin a political analyst, who will be here to discuss on the recent landslide victory of Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim. Hello, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Before we begin, let's just talk about uh, the recent win. What do you think is going to Im how is it going to impact the political scene from now that Dato Sri Anwar is in the parliament? I think now you have a, a stronger opposition coalition because uh, Anwar will be leading a delegation of 82 MPs mm -hmm. and it will be much more effective. Um, the government would be checked more effectively. You're going to see more livelier debate in the parliament and um, I think this, 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 is, this is what you can see now and, but what you can also expect is uh, Anwar would have to soon come out with his shadow cabinet lineup. That would actually signal to the population public that he's ready to take over the government. He needs to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, in any democratic country, um, if you have a parliamentary system, the, op the official opposition should have an opposition, should have a shadow cabinet lineup. Okay. Yeah. So from the March election to the recent election, we yeah. see people favoring the opposition in terms mm -hmm. of votes. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think it's, it's understandable. Many people expect BN to take, to learn. A lesson from March 8, but you do not see anything, you know, concrete after that. You merely see infighting between the parties. Everyone putting, pointing fingers at each other, but no one is pointing to the fact that uh, the one party predominance by BN is no longer uh, relevant in Malaysian politics today. Mm. You know, the country has grown 51 years now. Um, it's no longer, it's no longer a political baby. You don't expect the the Malaysians to accept um, authoritarian rule anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, BN has not signaled any real reform. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pala has been talking about reform in judiciary, in uh, the ACA, but you haven't seen anything real. And if you look back, um, the, the fundamental reasons that caused uh, the landslide, sorry, the tsunami in, on March 8, um, for example, the call for electoral reform, uh, the rejections of mainstream media, uh, which signal a call for media law reform, uh, you know, the call to have a more equal and more inclusive ethnic erasions, all those calls are not hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how, how do you think uh, the, the present government should uh, react to this? Or? I think the government, if they want to survive, they must show us that they are alternative to Anwar Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. That's how Patla won his landslide in 2004. Mm -hmm. If you go back to 2004, uh, Abdullah was supposed to be Mahathir's successor as surrogate, but he did not play that role. He did not win the landslide because he's going to be a successor of Mahathir. He positioned himself as actually an alternative to Anwar when Anwar was still in prison. And Malaysians placed their hope on him. Today, if he wants to come back, the only way for him to do to save his party is to actually compete with Anwar on reform. Mm -hmm. He needs to relax control on the state's government. He needs to accept the fact that the day of one party dominance is forever gone. Mm -hmm. If he insists, if, if he refuses to accept that, he would find soon his party will be replaced. And the one party predominance would be the greatest nightmare for BN and Amno. Mm -hmm. And Anwar, um, Datuk Sri Anwar has to gather. 30, 30 MPs Peace. on his side, yeah. do you think? Do you think that's possible? It's possible. I wouldn't rule out that possibility. The mm -hmm. very simple reason is that this can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, all you need to see is that assume our politicians, they are just like businessmen looking for profits. These people look for power. So if they believe that Anwar is a rising force, and the moment they think that there are 30 other people who join this Anwar to form the new government, they would not want to be left out in the cold. Because being opposition parliamentarians is a tough job in Malaysia. And none of those BN MPs have survived, except you know, people like Tengu Razali, as opposition. They can't mm -hmm. survive. So it's a very tough thing. They know how, how tough it is to be opposition, and they do not want themselves to be in that position. So the moment if they sense that Anwar is coming into power, Anwar has obtain enough support, they would want to jump. Because those who jump early mm -hmm. would have a chance to go for ministership, deputy ministership. If you jump late, you would end up as 
uh, backbenchers in the new government. If you don't jump, you become <coughs> opposition. Mm. So it's a tough job. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like asking the BN MPs not to jump if they know everyone else is supporting. It's to tell someone and say, now there is a good job over there that offer you 20,000 ringgit per month and you should stay on with your job. You know, you should, you should accept the fact that you'll be demoted to earning 5,000 a month. Mm -hmm. They can't. BN MPs are not known for their integrity, are not known for, um, you know, their resilience in, in, in times of difficulty. Mm -hmm. They're not known for that. Okay. So you, 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 would you predict and say that September 16 will become it may, a reality? It may not happen on September 16. Okay. I think the more likely scene is that you may find Pakatan Rakyat seats increase from 82 to maybe 90. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that would happen by September 16. Mm -hmm. How will all these changes uh, play an impact or role in the next election? Well, <coughs> we need to ask the question whether when will the next election be called. Mm -hmm. Because they could actually, Anwar can pull down the government by uh, asking uh, well, he can pull down the government by having a no-confidence vote. The government will respond by dissolving the parliament. Mm -hmm. If Anwar support that, that may happen. And then we have a fresh election. And I believe, looking at the latest uh, public opinion, I think there would be a great landslide for Pakatan Rakyat. And mm -hmm. to me, that would be a better situation than if Anwar comes into power through defection without a, a fresh election. Mm, okay. Yeah. okay. The, the main good. reason to have a new government through election mm. is um, the new government would then have a higher degree of legitimacy. It will be, be stronger um, from any threats from, say, the monarchy, uh, the military, the police or the civil service. Mm -hmm. If they have come into power through backdoor by defections, first of all, the government will be very vulnerable to any threat of any of their members leaving the government. Mm -hmm. They can't afford to do that. Mm -hmm. And secondly, the unelected institutions may extract some concession from them mm -hmm. for political cooperation. And that's not good. If you want, you, want to, you want to see a change of government, that's because you want to see a renewal of the system. Mm -hmm. By co-opting the old people and subjecting to um, political black mills, potential political black mills from unelected institutions, it's not a good sign. Okay, and <clears throat> and uh, you did say that any opposition party will not last very long in in power. How did that theory come okay. about? Okay, now if you look at you look at uh, democratizing countries, many democratizing countries have a new government. Um, it, they, they, you you see first you have a first party alternation, but the new party most of the time would not last for more than one or two elections. They collapse. For me, for one simple reason, um, there is a period of honeymoon. People want to try new things. So if things does not work out, they would just look go for the or go back to the old party. So and it's a common thing. Once a country is democratized, um, people would like to see changes. Mm -hmm. So it's quite natural that uh, if you after democratization, the new government may collapse in one or two elections. After one or two elections, they may lose. They may lose the, either the the next or the second elections after that. Okay, with yeah. that note, I'd like to say thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chinghot. Thank you for yeah, your time. Sure. I'm Lucinda Joseph, thanks for watching.